Hey everybody, today I'm going to teach you how to do as much damage as possible as a warrior in phase 2 of Season of Discovery. Warriors are a bit weaker in phase 2 compared to casters right now, but you can actually kind of compete with them if you play it right. In this video I'll go over talents, gearing, consumables, important raid buffs and debuffs, the rotation, and how to do some specific fights uh, with fight by fight commentary and nomer. If you have any questions feel free to hit me up on Twitch, the link will be in the description. Uh, I stream basically daily, and it's mostly classic WoW content. So the first thing up is the spec. Right now I'm playing Two-Handed Arms with an Axe. Uh, Two-Handed Arms really shines in Cleave because of Sweeping Strikes being extremely powerful, and on High Armor bosses because of Deep Wounds. Deep Wounds will ignore boss armor, so it's really strong against the High Armor bosses in Nomergon. Later on, when bosses are a lot faster, um, there could be a switch to Fury and Dueled Fury specifically because of Death Wish. You know, the shorter the fight is, the, the longer you have Death Wish up, the higher uptime you have with the 20% damage buff. But right now, uh, this is performing the best out of all the specs. It's really important to have an Axe because Axe spec is extremely powerful because of Deep Wounds, scaling off of crits. There is an alternative spec you can play to this where you don't take Mortal Strike. Um, and instead you opt for Quick Strike and Blood Surge. Uh, my train of thought is that the bosses have high armor and you're not going to have the rage to just spam Quick Strikes. And you're kind of just going to be sitting there doing nothing. Uh, you miss out on Mortal Strike also, which isn't incredibly good, but you know it's still something to press. You know, you can go an entire fight, a 30-40 second fight, spamming these quick strikes and having no blood surge procs and you're just hitting this 150 damage quick strike. Before the quick strike nerf, I suppose this to be the best spec, but since quick strike got nerfed, I'm just gonna stick to the arms mortal strike spec. Uh, for the gearing, this is gonna be your period bis. You really want to have an axe. If you can't get whirlwind axe, you can get ravager. There's no reason not to be able to get Whirlwind Axe, though. If you're Alliance, you should opt for Bonebiter, but I'm an Orc, so I use Whirlwind Axe. Bonebiter is a quest axe from Scarlet Monastery. The helm is from Scarlet Monastery. The neck is from BFD. If you can't get this, you can get a Tiger Green, or let's just check. I guess this if you're Horde and you're questing with the Crown of Wills. If you have Warsong Rep, you can get the um, Agility Neck from Warsong. The shoulders are from a quest in Feralus, the cloak is from the STV event, chest is from another quest. If you have the blacksmithing chest from phase 1 BFD, I wouldn't bother getting this. They're about the same, and this quest is from a level 50 elite. Um, the bracers are Warsong Exalted, a lot of people don't have that, so some alternatives are, let's see. Um, I just got the green bracers from Scarlet Monastery. These, they drop from Cathedral, from the boss to the side. We talked about the weapon. The gloves are also from a quest in Feralus. The belt is from a rare in RFD. You have another Skull Monastery item. Short quest. Warsong rep. A lot of this stuff comes from phase one, like Warsong rep and some um, BFD loot. But it's not a huge deal. Like the upgrades aren't. It's not that big a deal. You can get some pretty decent alternatives. Uh, for rings, let's see what we have here. If you're Horde, you can get this ring. It's still really good. And I don't know, any of these. And for the Abyss setup, here's what you're going to use. You really want to be blacksmithing and engineering. For the helm and the belt, these are both extremely good. There's, no really, there's not really any alternatives for these. I mean, there's the weapon skill belt for the belt, but it's whatever. And uh, one important thing is that you go for the leather set. So if you get a tier item, you want to trade it in for the leather. The leather just has more stats on it. The plate is itemized for tanking. This is itemized more for DPS. I'm going to go with the Epic Axe, obviously. These gloves against Mechanicals. If you're not fighting Mechanicals, you can use the other gloves. Uh, these right here, I guess. One thing is, if you're not Orc, you can probably just use the powerlifting belt for the weapon skill. But since we're orc, the weapon skill isn't as strong. For enchants, we just have, these are really the only enchants you can take. Dismantles being like buffed and nerfed constantly, so I don't really know how strong it is. Right now I'm switching to weapon damage because not every boss is mechanical.
You know, that about rounds up the gear. I'll have links of these in the description, probably. A little more about runes. Uh, the only viable chest rune right now is Flagellation. It is by far the best rune you can use. It's just going to give you a massive damage increase. For the leg runes, since we're using a 2 ender, we're going to take Frenzy to Salt. Consume by Rage has been nerfed, so we're probably never going to take that with a 2 ender. This is just flat out better. I talked a little bit about Endless Rage and Quick Strike, but right now, Endless Rage seems to be the play. As you get better gear, you might be able to switch to Quick Strike on the lower armor bosses, just so you have something like to press when you don't have Whirlwind, Bloodthirst, sorry, Mortal Strike, and Slam. So you can just press Quick Strikes instead of Hamstring. And the Waste Room is precise timing, just for Slams. Since we're arms, we don't really get that much use out of Blood Surge, because we're not going to be using Bloodthirst. And Mortal Strike doesn't proc Blood Surge. We're also not Heroic Striking much, because we're using a 2-ender. So we just take precise timing. And for the Foot Room, we just take Rally and Cry, because it's, I mean, it's just the best in a raid. Now, for the consumables, we want to have Elixir of Agility, which is just going to be plus 15 agility. Uh, we want a Scroll of Strength 3 instead of this Elixir. This is an Elixir of Ogre Strength, which is plus 8 strength. It's worse, but it's a lot cheaper. Scrolls are kind of rare, and they're pretty expensive, so I'm not using them right now. I don't have any gold. I don't even remember professions of old, so... Uh, we have Dragon Breath Chili, which is your food buff. It'll just have a chance to proc fire damage. You can see at some point it's going to proc like 100-something damage. 138, 137, here and there. Warriors have Rage Potions. You really want to have these in a pinch. Sometimes you just have no Rage and you, you need something to press to get your Rage back, and you have Rage Pot for that. Oil of Immolation can also be very, very good. The problem with Oil of Immolation, though, is it resets your swing timer, so you want to use it at the, at, right after you finish a swing or you'll lose out on damage. Using these over the course of a fight can add like actually a lot of DPS, but they're very expensive. And I, as you can see, I'm not bothering to use them right now because it's just too much for me. Um... And then for raid buffs, there's a couple of extremely important raid buffs that you basically cannot do damage without. First being Homunculus. If you don't have a priest in your group using Homunculus and you have to Sunder, you're basically just going to just do significantly less damage. Homunculus is one of the best abilities in the game, but unfortunately a lot of priests don't take it because they have to compete with Prayer of Mending. And Prayer of Mending is also just like a really strong heal for them. Next up is Wind Fury Totem or Wild Strikes, which is from a Shaman or a Feral Druid. If you're Alliance, you have to take a Feral Druid. Uh, Warrior is completely unplayable without Wind Fury, and you'll never do damage without it. Um, next up, we have Leader of the Pack. This is kind of something extra that Ferals bring if they're specced into it. Not as important as Wind Fury or Homunculus. And then we have more armor debuffs in Fairy Fire and Curse of Recklessness. The unfortunate truth is that not every raid is going to have these debuffs. So, like, you're not going to be able to do as much damage if you don't have these debuffs. That's just how it is. That's how 10-man raiding is. It's hard to fit all these classes in the raid without, you know, scuffing some other person. Like right now, we don't have Curse of Elements for the Fire Mage and the Ellie Shaman. It's just the unfortunate reality. I mean, there's really nothing you can do about it unless you're making the group yourself. Uh, since we're Horde, we have a Shaman for Strength of Earth in our group. Alliance are going to want probably two Paladins, one for Might and one for Salvation. Maybe you don't need Salvation, and you can just take Kings instead. But for Kings, we have a Hunter using Aspect of the Lions, a 10% stat buff. It's extremely, extremely good. Not as big as Wind Fury, but it's very good. Uh, and last but not least, we have Mangle. Well, it might be least, actually. Which is 30% bleed damage from a Feral Druid. There's some other buffs you can get, too, but they're not really... I mean, you have Trishador from a Marksmanship Hunter, but right now that spec is pretty dead, because Melee Hunter is extremely overtuned. And then we have world buffs, which is right now just the Nomergon buff and Darkmoon Fair. You can get Darkmoon Fair in Mulgore or Elwyn Forest, depending where it is that week, and then it's not always up. And the world buff drops in Orgrimmar and Ironforge. I'm going to do just a quick overview of the rotation. It's not going to be very accurate because the mobs have zero armor and I have no raid buff, so the rage will be different. But I just have some like general things to do before I jump into the commentary. So first and foremost, you always want to have Battle Shout up. You should have this up before the boss fight, and if it falls off mid-boss fight, you should reapply it. Pretty straightforward. Second up, you should be running into the bosses with full rage. Uh, if you can't do that, then I guess you'll just have to rage pot on pull. But um, really try to pull rage before bosses. Sometimes you're going to be in a pug where they're just going slowly and you can't do that. It's whatever. So the main thing you want to do as a warrior is manage your rage. Um... Your abilities have different like rate damage per rage values. So, for example, Slam and Mortal Strike do about the same damage. 
but slam costs half as much rage. So in rage star scenarios, you're gonna want to prio slam over mortal strike. But other than that, you're gonna mortal strike, slam whirlwind. You want to use as many uses of berserker rage and blood rage as possible throughout a fight. You don't want to be losing out on these usages, or you're gonna be losing damage. Same with blood fury and other stuff. Um, basically, you're gonna run a run in with full rage. Uh, if you have full rage, you're gonna run with rogue strike and hit a, a probably a slam, and then you're gonna well, you're gonna run with blood rage and then do all this. And you're just going to use this on cooldown, it's pretty simple. The thing that gets most warriors is they will overuse Heroic Strike, and it's going to completely gut your damage, especially on the higher armor bosses when you have lower rage. If you're using Heroic Strike a lot, you will not have rage to use your other, much more efficient buttons that do more damage. Uh, one more thing is Overpower. Overpower is probably your best button to press, but it's kind of scary to lose all your rage to go overpower. So you want to dump as much rage as possible on Berserker Sense before you go Battle Sense to overpower. And that would involve using Heroic Strike, using Hamstring if you don't have Mortal Strike, Slam Whirlwind up. And then once you get to Execute, you're just going to press Execute. If you're really low rage, you can use Slam because Slam is actually more rage efficient than Execute. Otherwise, you're just going to press Execute. And you can overpower during Execute. It's actually pretty easy to do it because Execute will dump all your rage and you'll switch to Battle. And then you'll overpower and switch back to Berserker Sense and begin executing again. You want to, a little bit of min-max, I guess, you want to prioritize, like, if you're going to press Blood Rage, you want to have, like, all your buttons close to being up. And, for example, if you're, like, on a cleave fight and you press uh, Blood Rage, you can get two Whirlwinds inside your Flagellation, if you do it right before. But uh, let's just get into some commentary. Now I'm just going to walk you through some of these fights and kind of walk you through my thought process. Uh, on Grebus, you want to pull Rage before the boss spawns. You don't actually need to kill these, you move them to the cloud and the cloud will kill them. After the third wave on this side, you can spawn camp the boss for maximum uptime. As soon as he's up, provided your casters press their buttons, don't mind the fat finger here on the Rage bot. You want to run in with a Berserker Rage pre-pop and a Heroic Strike. This fight's going to be around 30 seconds. Most, I guess most raids will kill him in about 40 40 plus seconds, which means if you Berserker Rage on pull, Blood Rage after, you can Berserker Rage again before the fight ends, meaning you'll get like really high flagellation up time. I'm going to run in with a Mortal Strike. Uh, I actually didn't Heroic Strike him. I meant to, but I didn't because I guess I didn't. Uh, I don't know. I should have because I don't want to overcap Rage. Uh, since I have full Rage, I prior Mortal Strike. If I was in a lower Rage situation, I would prior Slam. Because Slam does a lot more damage per Rage than Mortal Strike when you have limited Rage. I'm going to press uh, Berserker Rage here and Blood Fury. Uh, you can throw this Dynamite whenever, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't interrupt your swing time or anything. I uh, actually Fat Finger Battle Sense and try to overpower because I can't really see which mob I got dodged on. After the Berserker Rage, I Blood Rage. Try to fit in as many globals as possible during the Blood Rage. As you can see here, I'm a little bit overcapped on rage, or not overcapped, but um, risking capping. And since I have endless rage, I don't really have anything to press. So I press hamstring to fish for a wind fury or deep wounds proc. And since I figured I would overcap rage with that auto attack, I also throw a heroic strike. Get dodge here, luckily, switch to battle sense, overpower, switch back immediately before you auto attack, so you get rage and berserker sense, and then just execute. He's about to die, and I'm spamming berserker rage, so my last execute gets buffed with flagellation. And yeah, that's about it. Ideally, you want to Rage Pot when you need Rage, and not Fat Finger on Pull. That'd be really good. If you're really min-maxing, you can Emulation Aura too, but you need to, or Oil of Emulation, but you need to be careful because this resets your Swing Timer. Here we have Viscous Fallout. He's pretty similar to Grubbus, in that he has low armor, and dies really fast. You're going to go in, Berserker Rage, Heroic Strike on Pull, so you don't overcap Rage. Um... The important thing for this boss is, like, about 10 seconds in, he's going to spawn adds. And you really want to have Berserker Rage, or you really want to have Flagellation and Sweeping Strikes over this. You can't Sweeping Strikes early, because if you Sweeping Strikes and you hit him, you will lose a charge and not sweep onto anything, so you need to wait for the adds to come up. So what I wanted, what I should do here is Blood Rage, Sweeping Strikes, switch to Berserker Sense, Rage Pot, and Whirlwind. But I mess all that up. So I'm going to Rage Pot, Sweeping Strikes, Berserker Sense, and I don't press Blood Rage here. What I should have done is press Blood Rage. Flagellation will double dip Sweeping Strikes, meaning that you're going to hit harder, and your Sweeping Strikes is going to hit harder. And your Sweeping Strikes duplicates your auto attack. 
for your attack, I guess. So that's what I should have done. Uh, I missed out on a lot of damage by not having Flagellation up here. It was just misplay. I don't know. I guess I was panicking because I don't want the ads to spread out. Throwing a grenade here is also really good. A solid dynamite. Or dense dynamite, whatever's the highest right now. You say did an extra 1100 damage. It's just literally free damage. Right now I'm focusing on, you know, just pressing my buttons and positioning myself to cleave. I see this one's going to get in the way. I want to walk over and cleave this. Then hopefully I just Berserker Rage here for another Flagellation, just execute away. Execute at level 40 is actually pretty efficient. I think it's more Rage efficient than Mortal Strike at 30 Rage. It is less Rage efficient than Slam. So if you have time to Slam and you're low Rage, you can Slam. If you don't, you can just spam Execute. But yeah, important takeaways for that fight. Just make sure you have Sweeping Strikes up. Oh, with... With a uh, flagellation for the ad spawn. Here's Crowd Pummeler. This fight's not really much different. There's nothing special. Just pro pressing your buttons on cooldown. It's a high armor boss, so the rage is kind of bad, so you have to be really careful not to heroic strike too much or hamstring too much. I'm gonna chain flagellation during my Blood Fury. One thing to note is, like, when you get these overpowers off, you have a five second window to overpower. So in that 5 seconds, you want to dump as much Rage as possible before switching stances. So, right here I actually misplayed. I should have Mortal Strike before I went to a Battle Stance to Overpower, but I Whirlwinded. It's not that much of a difference, but just a little minor thing. And as you can see, I'm probably going to swing in Battle Stance. So I swing in Battle Stance here, I have full Rage. I want to dump this Rage before I go back to Berserker. I'm just getting Chain procs. I tried to Heroic Strike to dump my Rage, I can't. Just sitting in Battle Stance. You would rather sit in Battle Stance and Overpower than get a few Globals off in Berserker Stance. Because Overpower is just incredibly strong. It has plus 50% chance to crit. And with the spec having so much damage based on Deep Wounds, it's just like a really, really good button to press. Finally, I dump as much Rage as I can. Dropped about 35 before I go back to Berserker Stance, which is fine. Remember, if you're ever like Star for Rage, you can Rage Pot. I should probably Rage Pot now. I do end up Rage Potting. I actually didn't need to Rage Pot there because I don't have any buttons to press up. So I could have saved it for Execute. But it's, it's fine to just Rage Pot like that. Because I don't have a Mortal Strike or a Whirl one coming up anytime soon. I would have had another auto attack before then. Here we go again, I get an Overpower proc. Spend all my Rage. I actually don't go to battle. I didn't think I would make it. And he was close enough to Execute where I didn't risk it. In hindsight, I probably should have Overpowered there. Here, yeah, I just get destroyed on... Rage, so I'm hitting slams. Otherwise, I'd be spamming execute. And down goes Crop Pummeler. Electrocutioner is just another single target boss. It's the same as the other ones, except he has lower armor than Crop Pummeler, I believe. So you can like spend more rage on heroic strikes and hamstrings if you can. Here, I actually pop the battle chicken before combat. You don't need to do this, obviously, if you don't have it, but it's just free damage. Run in with full rage, of course. I'm gonna run in with Berserker Rage, because it fits the. I mean, you should just always try to have max out time on this. If you're missing out on casts of Blood Rage and Berserker Rage, you're really screwing yourself. Starting off the fight with a huge overpower. Back to Berserker Stance. You see, I'm, I'm at 98 rage. All my buttons are up. I want to dump rage to overpower, so I'm heroic striking here. I don't want to miss this overpower. I would rather overpower than press any other button. Another overpower. Go back to battle. Go back to Berserker before my swing finishes, because I want to have rage and Berserker Stance. Now I have nothing's up, and I feel like I can safely spend some extra rage on hamstring for Wind Fury procs because I have a rage pot as a backup, so I just hamstring here. I think I do end up getting a Wind Fury proc. Same thing here. Flagellation comes back up. As you can see, like, Warrior on these like moderate armor fights is actually perfectly fine. It's on the high armor fights where it gets really rough. Another overpower. It's really important to switch back to Berserker Sense as fast as possible if, you, if you're under 25 rage when you overpower. So like, I'm going to overpower here and immediately switch back. So when I auto-attack, I get the rage and Berserker Sense so I don't lose it. Another overpower. I do have a rage pot up. 
coming up, and I do have flagellation for the entire execute phase. At this point, I'm pretty sure you should not be mortal striking in execute phase. I think a 30 rage execute is going to do more damage than mortal strike. So you should just execute, I think. Fill it up with the. End it up with the Blood Rage. And he's up. Mechanical Menagerie is another fight where Warrior can really shine because there's targets to cleave and Whirlwind. Sweeping Strikes is really, really strong. On pull, it can be a little bit sketchy to run in in Whirlwind because of, of threat, but ideally, you would run in Whirlwind in Berserker Sense. Dump your Rage, switch to battle. And Blood Rage after your Sweeping Strikes. You always want to pair Sweeping Strikes with Flagellation, because once again, like, you want to fit as much damage in when you're doing more damage, right? And Sweeping Strikes is an extra 5 auto attacks. It's nice that Berserker Rage lines up with Sweeping Strikes, so I try to always just use these at the same time. And use Blood Rage in the downtime. Ideally, uh, I Blood Rage to fit in two Whirlwinds, but I don't, know, I don't really know if I'm in max that. In the future, you should Blood Rage right before a Whirlwind, so you can fit two Whirlwinds in per Flagellation on this fight. I try to step over here to hit this with Whirlwind. I think I end up getting a 4-target hit. Important thing is not to over-spam Cleave. Cleave might seem like it's a good ability to use, and it is if you have extra Rage, but it's never going to be better than Mortal Striker Slam. It's just not. Um, Cleave makes it so that you're not generating Rage from your auto attack unless you get a Wind Fury proc, whereas the other two don't. So there's a big opportunity cost with it. Right here, I'm obviously every time Sweeping Strikes comes up, you're looking to press Sweeping Strikes. So I end up not having enough Rage. I actually Rage Pot for one Rage, which is probably a mistake. I should have just waited. Berserker Rage, Whirlwind. One nice thing to have is the Overpower on Nameplates, Weak Aura. I'll probably link it in the description. It makes it so that, say you Whirlwind and the off-target gets dodged, you know that you can switch to an Overpower it for free damage. Like I do right here. Perfect example. I Whirlwind, uh, it gets dodged, I target it and Overpower it for free, I don't know, probably a thousand damage. Sweeping Strike comes back up, Sweeping Strike, Zerker Rage. You don't really need to pry out anything during Sweeping Strikes. Uh, one thing you don't want to do during Sweeping Strikes is Hamstring or Pummel, if you can avoid it. Everything else is fine. Should probably be looking to throw a grenade here. I actually do, and it's three targets because the X spawns. One more important thing is to always be hitting the target with Homunculus if you can, and try to have the casters pry other targets. Right here, I end up having to switch because the target's too low because I'm on it with debuffs. And Homunculus actually ends up switching, so that's kind of cool. And clear these all down. And yeah, that's 520 DPS with no world buffs. No one in the raid has world buffs because we had an unfortunate wipe. It shows like the warrior is just really, really good at clean situations like that. Oh, one thing extra you could do in Menagerie is actually use Oil of Emulation after every swing if you have enough gold for it. It's going to be an extra like hundreds of damage every time you press it. But that's like an extra, like, you know, try hard thing to do. And now Mech Janeer, I mean, it's going to be the same thing. Just fit as many Blood Rage, Berserk Rages in as possible. Use your buttons as often as possible. Try not to waste your Rage. Always get real excited when you see an overpower pro. Oh, one one little min max you could do is you can walk towards the bombs to hit them with your whirlwind. It's just free damage and it kills the bombs, so your range don't have to deal with it. Now he phases. Try to. I shouldn't have slammed that. I should have just auto attacked it, because the slam is overkill and the overkill won't count on logs, and I just could have gotten rage from it.
A lot of people have you fat face too, but you can just PvP trinket the slow and rage bot instead. Which is what I did. But yeah, nothing special here. Just same old button presses throughout the whole fight. Yeah, that's about it. Um, in the coming weeks, if I end up getting weapons, I'll probably try to play dual wield and make a dual wield video. But at the moment, I think I think arms is just the best right now. As the fights get shorter and your gear gets better, death wish is gonna just become better by default relative to arms because death wish is just such an incredible cooldown. And yeah, that's all.